with just a quick tutorial about getting started with Adobe Photoshop Elements so that you can get to work on creative projects. Um, my name is Katie Nelson and I'm known as Katie the Creative Lady online. And you can find me on my website at katiethecreativelady.com uh, where you'll find lots of information about creativity and memory keeping, photography, of course, tutorials, and I even have my own shop. So I'm so excited about Photoshop Elements and I've been using it for more than 14 years. I've worked through many various upgrades. And even though I sometimes use other programs, this one's still my favorite. I think it's the most versatile and easiest to learn and it's very powerful. And I like that it's a standalone product. You don't need a subscription or to be part of the Adobe Creative Cloud service to use this. You can buy it as a digital or physical copy. The current price is $99.99, or if you're upgrading from a previous version, there's a $79.99 upgrade price. And sometimes you can even find it on sale for a little less around Black Friday time um, when you're looking for a physical copy. Sometimes they're sold at Costco or Sam's Club. Of course, on the website for Adobe, there are plenty of tutorials and lots of help. Uh, but I want to just show you a few tips today that should make it a lot easier for you to use. I have written some reviews that they feature on their website, but I just want to make it clear that I have not received any compensation, either uh, monetary or with free product for doing this or for doing anything with this video. These are just my own views and I just want to help others use this great program. So I think this, I think Adobe Photoshop Elements is a great program. I don't think uh, most people will need the, what's I think they would refer to as full Photoshop unless you are perhaps a graphic designer by trade. I can even do quite a bit of my designing in Photoshop Elements these days. They've just made it so powerful. So how often should you upgrade? Well, obviously it'd be fun if you could, uh, upgrade each time they come out with a new version. Now, I know that's not possible for everyone. So I try to recommend at least going every few upgrades so that you don't get left behind by all the fun technology that they have. They have a nice comparison guide on their website if you want to look through and see what has changed with each version. So I want to show you a little bit about how to set it up and get started. After you've downloaded the program and you go to the home screen, you may wonder where to go. They have some guided projects for you, of course, but where you're going to want to spend a lot of your time is in the photo editor. And that's where you'll do all your creating. It will open up a window that looks like this, and this will be your workspace. And I am going to go right into my Photoshop elements so I can show you around. Uh, this space is uh, something that you'll want to get familiar with and try looking around at all the buttons. Anything that you hover over will tell you what it is. I might need to be in a project for it to do that. Let me do that. So first thing you want to do is start your project. So you want to hit new up here in the, the drop down menus, new blank file. And this is something that's nice in the newer version is they have a choice for scrapbooking. That will take you to a 12 by 12 canvas with 300 pixels per inch, which is what you want for the best printing. And you may think, well, I only want a scrapbook, an 8 by 8 size page or a 10 by 10. That's okay. You always want to create it in the bigger size because it will still print in the smaller size just fine. If you create an 8 by 8 and you ever decide you want to print bigger, then you won't have as high a quality. So you can um, hit OK. You want to make sure you're going to save your project right as you get started. And you'll have a file that you'll want to do it to, uh, to save it to. So I want to, I already know what I'm going to work on. So it makes it easy for me to name. If you don't know uh, yet, that's OK. You can just do a generic name and change it later. So here I'm going to do a page with some photos from 2019 from October of that year. This is kind of how I name my layouts so that they're easy to find um, in my organizational system. And then I usually will do something 
descriptive of what it is. You're going to want to save it as a layered file while you're working on it. There are two types of layered files. There's one that's the Photoshop native file, which is PSD, or there's a TIFF, T-I-F-F. -F. Both of those are layered and um, they both work great. A TIFF file is actually just takes up a little bit less room on your hard drive. It's not significant, but it is a little less. The reason I got used to saving as TIFF is I used to be on a Windows computer and you couldn't see in the preview what the file looked like with a PSD, but you could with a TIFF. Now I'm on a Mac, it doesn't matter. I can see it both ways, but I just have this habit. So I, these are my settings that you can see and I just hit OK and I have that saved, which is a great way to start your project. If you don't remember to do that at the beginning and you, you start to work in this canvas and you go to exit, the program will prompt you to save. It still is possible to lose your work if you exit out too quickly or if your computer was to crash, then it's just nice to have that save as you go. So the next thing you'll want to do, you can see that it gave me a blank white background and I'll just go ahead and use that for this. Sometimes you might want to import a scrapbooking paper and you'll do that just the same way that I'm going to work on photos. So um, there are a couple of ways to get photos right into your project. One would be to hit File and Open, and then you would go to locate where those photos are. So in this case, here's a photo of my son. This was at the Rock Hall of Fame in Cleveland. And the best thing, I, one of my favorite parts of this program is this photo bin that you'll see right here along the bottom. And that helps you keep track of everything that's open in this program. So you can see here's my photo, here's my canvas. I'll click on my canvas, put that up on the screen. But from my photo bin, I'm going to use my mouse and I'm going to drag that photo right on there. And obviously that's a pretty big photo. I don't really want it to fill the whole canvas. So you're gonna be careful where you grab. If you grab here on the side and start to move it, it's not going to be proportioned as you resize it. If you grab it from the corners, wait till you see that little double arrow happen, and then you resize it all together, then you will maintain those proportions. And I'll just move it over right here. Okay, another way you can get a photo right in there is you can go to where your photo file is and you can just, let me make sure I have this. I have a lot of things open because I'm recording a tutorial, <laughs> but you can just drag that in right from that file. Again, it will be in your photo bin. So click on your photo bin and go back to your canvas. You can put that right in there. Now I want that to be the same size as my other photo. So I'm just going to grab the corner start to resize it, I can see kind of the guide that I'm using as my other photo. And I'm just going to resize that there and make sure, there we go. And I'll just scoot it over a little bit too. Okay, so I have those. And I still want another photo in. So I'm gonna just do the same thing and I'll put that one in. Again, my photo bin. And this one I wanna keep big. I like, this is one of my favorite pictures. Uh, it was a beautiful day there. I don't know if you can see, but my son is standing in front of the letter I. And I'm going to keep this as my layout. I'm gonna keep that white part there and add some journaling. And I just want to explain a little bit over here about the layers stack. You can see that this is the order the photos are in and that makes a difference. So um, if I was to put this one up on top, it would hide parts of the other one. It's kind of like a blanket covering them. But if you put the blanket on the bottom and put the other items on top, then they show up. So your layers palette 
is very powerful and I love that. Um, over here, as you hover over this, there's the little pop-up that tells you what it is. That's the text tool. So I'm going to click on that. Um, there's different fonts you can choose from. You get uh, addicted to <laughs> putting fonts in. So you can see that I have. I accidentally changed that there. So I'm going to go back to what I had. And let's see, I'm going to do a little headline with this. So I'll probably make it a little bigger. And I'll do, you just kind of have to draw a box where your text is going to go. And then you start typing. Now you can also play around with the justification. If you come down here, you can center it. You can justify it to the left, to the right. I'll just keep it to the right here. You can even say, well, I want that to be a little bigger. So you could come down here and even make it a, a larger font. So now I have a nice little title there, but I want a little bit more journaling. So I think I'll draw another box down here. And I don't want it to be as big as that other. So I think I will do it at an 18. And I'm going to type a few details in about our trip. So let's see, I'll just say we really enjoyed going to the Rock Hall of Fame. Now I might look at that thing. Oh, those look a little close together. So I can adjust my spacing there to make it a little farther apart. Again, we weren't okay, just a quick little bit of journaling, and that's a little close to the edge. I think I'll just move it over a little bit and line it up more with my title. So again, save. You want to save this still as your layered file. But because I feel like this is done, I'm also going to save it as a flattened file. And this is where you'll want to save it in JPEG, JPEG format. And it's okay that it has the same name. It won't overwrite the file. I'm sorry, I kind of went over that fast. I should show you what I saved there. I get in a habit. Okay, so um, as I do this, this will, I am rewriting this file because it's got the same name. I wanted to show you that you want to make sure your quality is at a 12 and it's the largest size. So that will give you the best printing results. And then hit OK. So believe it or not, you just learned a lot of things pretty quickly just from this short little tutorial. So Photoshop Elements is obviously a great uh, program and there you know now where to find the help that you need, when to upgrade, how to use the editor, how to start a new project, how you can open or import files into Photoshop Elements, how you can arrange multiple photos in the program and add text and save your file and look at what you can end up with. Just a really great page and a great way to keep that memory. I hope that you will continue to watch my tutorials and be sure to hit like or subscribe or both so that you can find me again. Thanks so much. Bye.